Hello everyone, it's Dominic here from the British Esports Association uh, back with another stream. Uh, we've got a great panel today talking about something that's very important, uh, talking about mental health, uh, well-being. Um, you know, according to Mental Health uh, First Aid England, one in four of us uh, will experience a mental health issue in any given year. Um, so, you know, I really wanted to put this stream together to discuss the importance of mental health and also things you can do to take care of your well-being. You know, we're in an unusual time at the moment uh, around lockdown and COVID-19 and um, in esports in particular, um, you know, mental health appears to be an issue for, for some people. So we want to talk about this and look at the ways in which, um, you know, we can take care of our mental health and, and and things like that. I've got a, a panel of people to talk here who uh, probably have much better knowledge than I do in this area. So I'll try and be a moderator as usual. Uh, if you have any questions throughout the stream, please just ask them in the chat and I'll do my best to answer them either throughout the stream or towards the end of the stream. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to uh, bring in uh, the other panelists now. I'm just going to make sure they're all unmuted. Okay, so hello everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining me uh, today's stream. How are we all doing? Thank you. Well, yeah, good. very good. Thanks. Okay, cool. Well, if, if you'd like to introduce yourself, so well, just very quickly, uh, for those of you who don't know who I am, I head up content at British Esports and I have a background in journalism as well. Um, so over to you, Angela, if you'd like to tell us about yourself, what you've done in esports, a, a bit on your background, please. So um, I'm currently still um, a student at Newcastle University. I've been an executive of the Gaming and Esports Society there for four years and its president for two. Um, and I've also worked as um, a community manager, um, organising sort of um, casual tournaments for students in the National Student Esports. And you're a member of our Women in Esports Committee at British Esports, right? Yeah, I am. Excellent. Okay. Uh, Adam, please tell us about yourself. Cool. Yeah. Hi. Looking forward to uh, this. Day. Thank you for allowing me to join. Um, so I'm founder of um, a website called BelieveBeform.com. That is a large content website that educates um, the sport community and also education um, sector around all areas of performance, sports psychology, but also helps people to look after their mental health and well-being. We currently support a number of schools and sport national governing bodies with applied and practical content. And aside of that, I'm also a qualified cognitive behavioural therapist. Okay, cool. And, and Chris, yourself? Yeah, hi Dom. Thanks for, thanks for inviting me on. Um, so yeah, my name is Chris Padgett. I'm a uh, by day, at least, I'm a, a partner in a, a law firm in the West End called Sheridan's. Um, we specialise in in all areas of of the kind of sports entertainment industry. Um, I do a lot of work within the esports space with um, players, uh, teams, tournament organisers, um, funders, and um, that, that's as I say my kind of day job. In as a as an aside, I uh, with a, a number of others have recently set up a, a mental health charity uh, called Milestone, uh, which really seeks to normalize the conversation around mental health by using the kind of the cultural currency and the, the, the unifying elements of, of sport, uh, esports and, and, and entertainment. Excellent. Okay, well, I'm, I'm joined by some great panelists here today, obviously. I guess to kick things off, um, you know, it's easy to say uh, mental health is important. Uh, but you know i wanted to start with what does mental health mean to you you know and and why is mental health so important because for me when i was younger it wasn't discussed that much and i think it was a bit more of a taboo subject whereas now people are talking about this more and i think that's healthy you know but it's that's a bit of my background around this i've had a little bit of anxiety and things in the past that rear its head what, what does mental health uh, mean to you guys and who would like to kick us off no takers yeah i i, I can I, I mean i can go i can go first I, okay I, um you know I, I think i think there is as you say dom a, a still a Still very much a, a stigma around the term mental health and, and to a certain extent that's generational um 
you know what is what is mental health it, it's how one feels and there's no there's no right or wrong um definition of it necessarily you know for me it's around mental well-being it's around um having balance um keeping perspective um but but that's just my own take on it um i'm, I'm not qualified to give a, a, a scientific or, or, or clinical definition of it um but what i can talk to i suppose is my own experience of, of mm -hmm. facing mental health um struggles um the 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 unease that that made kind of fostered in me because of the, the stigmas maybe that i had been um or i had bought into um and and so for for me now it's about just trying to 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 educate myself around what what this area is um how we can all better engage with it how we can all be more self-aware um but i think the first and most important thing is is for people to be comfortable with 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 not you know locking away how we feel and mm. um and and being and being open to 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 i suppose not always being okay you know we live in a culture where it's it's um very fast paced everyone's always online everyone's always kind of on the go and and maybe we've lost sight of that um ability to be honest with ourselves about about how we how we feel and and almost feel ashamed ashamed sometimes of 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 um not living up to these standards that we all set ourselves which are ultimately mm -hmm. unrealistic and and while social media is a fantastic outlet um you know it, it can also create a, potentially a bit of a false reality around you know the the, the, the ups and downs the inevitable ups and downs of, of life so yeah i suppose that's my kind of take on it which is it, it's it's what it is to everybody will have a different view on it and everyone will have a different uh, opinion on what it means or a definition to you know how they relate or resonate with it but it, it for mm. me it's around kind of it's, it's the, the state of your 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 mental state and your mental health and um and, and for me that's all around balance and respect it's hard to put a finger on that right and it's it is hard to talk as well because i've been one in the past to bottle up things and you know there is that whole term you know suffer in silence don't suffer in silence that kind of thing but it is very hard to reach out we've seen mental health come into more prominence in esports over the uh, you know the past few years or so and you know some responses I've seen from some people have been that well it's all well and good saying reach out to people and or it's you know you'll see people saying oh my DMs are always open you can always talk to me and then there have been examples where some people have spoken to friends that have said that and not got any response or the response that they thought they would have you know that's it's not easy to to speak about these things is it still even though we have social media and stuff like that you think it would make it easier but in some ways for me it, what I've found it's made it harder anything you want to add to that Angela or, or Adam so um, when it comes to sort of talking to other people as um, someone who experiences mental health problems myself there's um, something that we often talk about which is like you've um, kind of got to build a good support network of people. So for example, both me and my partner suffer from mental health problems, which can sometimes result in conflicts. Um, or um, so um, if I'm having a problem, the first person I want to consult will be my partner, but they're not always in the mental state to be able to look after me because they've got their own problems to deal with. Yeah. So you've got to like, build a good support network of friends and family and professionals and partners to make sure that you can sort of you know balance it out and also it allows people to sort of look after themselves if they need to if they're having their own problems mm. um it's something i'm still trying to develop because i've sort of recognized that my support network is quite small so yeah absolutely i think mine is as well you know i go on facebook and i have hundreds of friends you know quote unquote but a lot of them are people that I made friends with at university back when Facebook was new I'm sh showing my age there but actually my actual support network is probably only I can count on one hand you know who that is it's probably my parents 
my wife, like one of my closest friends, that's probably about it. So it's not easy for people out there that don't have a support network. It, I guess it can be hard to to find one. For me, it's, you know, when I'm working with um, people, so we think about mental health often, you know, the, we know there's a stigma there. We know that people worry around opening up and sharing things. And I think there's some great initiatives, charities, you know, you, you mentioned it for Mental Health First Aid England, organizations who are educating people on how do we support people who are going through anxiety? And how do we support people who are suffering with OCD or, or depression? And for me, with individuals who are experiencing mental health problems themselves, I always encourage them to build a mental health support network. So find a group of people who will listen to you, find a group of people who you can open up with. And what we, we tend to know is that there'll be some people in your network who, who won't be great at listening. There'll be some people in your network who won't be great at offering that advice. So it's a matter of seeking out the right people. If you know that your mom and dad are really good at listening, then maybe they're the people to talk about rather than talking to a close And so we're struggling to, to sort of manage that with you. So for me, it's, it's trying to be really active with finding the right support. And we also know that people who have high levels of connectedness, and when I mean connectedness, I mean positive relationships, are more likely to experience less anxiety, less stress, and they're more likely to actually have an increase in confidence. So it's not an easy thing to do, but I encourage people to try to seek out how they can build upon their connectedness and build those relationships with others so that they do have people that they can speak out to and, and get support from. Yeah, absolutely. And you've all sort of answered, partly answered my question here is what, what things can people do to help take care of their well-being? You know, particularly during this pandemic or within the esports sector, you know, or there's many people indoors, finding that support network, as we've said, is important what else can people do because i mean for me i find that i'm someone that throws myself into my work a lot and i can get a bit burnt out sometimes or i could get a bit agitated and i'm well aware of that um regular breaks i know it's easy to say but I, I find that helps doing exercise are there any other things that you you all have found that helps your well-being or looks looks after yourselves um, so during this pandemic, I found it very helpful to try and um, set strict times and schedules for things. So um, I remember back in high school, I used to struggle a lot during summer holidays or half term breaks because I wouldn't have any sort of structure in my life. And whilst when um, I was working or when I went to school and I had a strict nine to five or a strict schedule, I used to find it a bit easier to kind of work out what I was doing and when, keep track of things, um, keep my mood up. So right now it's quite difficult being locked inside all the time and having to self-motivate yourself to do things, um, especially because I'm finishing off my dissertation. So I've basically set um, around five hours every day from Monday to Friday to do dissertation work. Every Wednesday evening I have organised time for me to hang out with my housemates um, after 8pm I'll watch some cartoons over the internet with my friends, that sort mm -hmm. of thing. Um, and I find that's helped me keep track of, you know, what day it is. It's helped me, you know, make sure I'm socially interacting with people, making sure I'm staying productive as well. Yeah. So I found that very useful. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's very easy now, especially in this digital age, to get distracted by things. You know, before you know it, it's the evening, you know, and uh, you haven't maybe been as productive, productive as you would have liked or to do a, a mix of balanced things, you know. And I know that if I was living by myself, I would go on a very distracted route and I think I probably would have slightly worse well-being than as I am now living with my family, you know, my children and my wife. They sort of keep me on the straight and narrow, you know. But I think having a structure, that sounds very that can be very useful you know and I'm I rigidly stick to my calendar as well uh, Chris Adam any, any points there things that you found are, are good for look, looking after your well-being Chris I'll let you I'll, I'll let okay, you first. <laughs> okay okay um, yeah, look 
I think I think um, what Angela said is it will will ring true to a lot of people. Um, structure certainly helps. And and look, as I probably keep saying in this stream, I you know I can only talk from my own experiences and, and my own um, yeah my own take on it and what works for me it may not work for other people. Um, for, for me, exercise is a really big one. Um, I, I actually have a underlying chronic health condition, which uh, was really the trigger for for my, uh, my my struggles with with my mental health. But but a lot of that came down to, and and the more and this wasn't something that you know I worked out quickly. It took it's taken a long time and a, a lot of kind of um, both therapy, but but also just kind of self reflection to to work out, which is. I get caught up in the future a lot. And so actually things around uh, lockdown um, and the uncertainty that that brings can be quite triggering um, mm. for me. And I, I found myself going to a going to a place where I was worrying about the future, whether it be job certainty, um, you know, family life, uh, mortgage, home, all, all the, the, the standard kind of pressures that, that everybody has. Um, and, and so I both benefit from having a structure and a, and a routine, uh, but but also from just constantly trying to stay present. And I find exercise is a really good way for myself of doing that. It brings me to the here and now. It motivates me. There's obviously the, the physiological um, and, and psychological benefits of it, which are very well proven around you know, the endorphins and the effect that they have on you. Mm. Um, and and yeah, I suppose it, it is it's, it's balance. It's balance of, of everything. And and I am by no way um, anywhere near a finished article on it. I'm I'm frankly pretty awful at it. But trying to balance, you know, being fulfilled in work, being um, a good a good husband, a good father, a good friend, um, looking after myself, setting time in my day to try and commit to a meditation practice or even just to sit and not do anything. Um, mm. But, but again, I'm, I'm quite a process driven person. And so I, I certainly benefit from, from having a, a structure and a routine. Uh, can't say I stick to it necessarily, but uh, it, <laughs> it is comforting nonetheless to know that, um, that I, that I have that in place. Um, but by the same token, you know, I also find that if I'm too prescriptive over things and I set myself unrealistic challenges within a day, that can also be harming uh, to, 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 to my to, to my well-being and, and to how I'm feeling. So it's um it's a, it's an ever evolving uh, an ever evolving kind of game, I suppose, to try and work mm. out what the what the best approach is. But but yeah, they're, they're the things that, that work for me, uh, Adam. I don't know if if you if you share that or you have a different take on it. Yeah, I think it's important, as you, you said and highlighted, everyone is different. So people are going to respond differently to um, different coping strategies. Someone might love deep breathing. Someone else might find deep breathing really difficult and not something that necessarily helps them. For me, you know, in mental health, we look at mental health, we know that each and every one of us have mental health and it's, it's on a continuum. It fluctuates um, depending on situation, depending on circumstance. And that can be going from thriving, managing, struggling through to, to ill. But what's really important for me and everybody is that we try to think about how can we maintain positive mental health habits um, and how can we try and do that each week. And there are some really um, effective strategies, which I think are really important that each and every one of us can put in place. So as, as Chris said, exercise in terms of the research and link between the, the mind and body, there is a huge amount of research that points in the positive direction of exercise having a really good impact um, on well-being, boosting mood, reducing stress, um, reducing anxiety. But other things for me would be things such as making sure that we are trying to um, include activities in our week that provide us with a sense of positive reinforcement, activities that provide us with a sense of pleasure and achievement, trying to connect to our values, connecting to things that are really important to us, that mean a lot to us. You know, for one of your values you hold a very strong value towards relationships. What are you doing each week to maintain those relationships and build them? Mm. And then we've got the whole area of coping skills. If you think about your brain, do you have a psychological toolbox? Do you have a set of skills that you would use um, to maintain your mental health? And not only using those skills when you feel stress, pressure, anxiety, or, or a negative emotion or unhelpful thoughts, but practicing and utilizing those skills, just like you would if you wanted to 
to exercise. Sometimes we just go out for a run or we go on a cycle and we really enjoy it. So finding some really great um, psychological tools, interventions or exercises that can be really um, important for sort of boosting your overall well-being. And those can be things such as progressive muscle relaxation to mindfulness exercises to developing a self soothe box. There are a number of tools that I would encourage people to to be really proactive with. Um, and these tools are practical, they're applied, so they can be, um, you can write stuff down, and you're gonna be doing things. And I think for me, if we can get people maintaining some of those habits each week, I'm not talking about hours every day, then I think that's really gonna help people to, to boost your overall mental health and well-being. Absolutely, some really brilliant answers there. Thanks for, for sharing that, everyone. And you raised some important points as well. Um, Adam, you mentioned, you know, finding, focusing on what's important to you you know tying in with your values and I think a challenge is you know a lot of young people now growing up in this digital age they're still figuring themselves out you know they're still finding out what makes them tick what those important values are you know if you'd have asked me that as I was 20 years ago 14 years old I I probably wouldn't know what was important to me back then as I do now as I've got all those life experiences so that's a challenge you know for people to figure out and you know, when people say, oh, finding yourself or knowing yourself is important, that doesn't come easy, you know, mm-hmm. uh, for me at all. Um, and, and on your point, Chris, around, you know, activities, exercise, I think I'm quite similar. I, I, I always feel good after I've done exercise or I find that yoga or a bit of meditation every now and then in the evening really helps me. Like Adam, like you were saying, everyone's different. You know, you've got to find uh, what it is that, that, that aids you as an individual. Um, I will just say quickly, um, Hazza has said in the chat, a consistent bedtime is vi- a vital part of a routine and maintaining mental well-being, so sleep is very important there. And I will say as well to people in the chat viewing, uh, we've got some good numbers here, so thanks for tuning in. And you don't need to ask a question if you don't want, you, you, know, you can sit and watch, that's fine. If you want to share any of your experiences, uh, f- feel free to, you know, and we're happy to discuss them on stream. Uh, as well, um, so yeah, I guess a, a bed, a consistent bedtime. Do, would you agree, uh, panelists here on the stream, that, that sleep is important? Uh, do you have any experiences there? Uh, I, I really struggle going to sleep because um, being left alone um, in the dark with your own thoughts can sometimes um, be quite intimidating and quite scary. Um, so I often will end up sort of listening to music or watching YouTube videos to go to sleep. Um, um, at the moment I'm living in a place which doesn't actually have any curtains, it's only blinds. So I'm, the the sun is waking me up really early on the morning. Um, and like, well, early for a student, I should say, so about 8am, 9am, which I'm sure is probably normal for everyone else here, but that's very early for me and my friends. But I found it's actually been really good. Um, to have like the, just the natural sunlight waking me up and it's meant that I've been more tired on a night as well so I've been going to sleep a lot easier hmm. and it means I've also had more time in the day more time to get work done more time to do things that I would enjoy like playing video games so I, I think yes yeah, so I would agree yeah yeah I, I have to say 12 o'clock I don't know what it is if I stay up beyond midnight it doesn't matter if, if I lay in, it's a weekend and I get up later. I always feel worse. If I go to bed before midnight, even if I get up at 6, 7, you know, the kids wake me up, I feel better. Uh, I don't know if that's just me looking into things too much because I am an overthinker. But I find going to bed a little bit earlier and waking up a little bit earlier, you know, in tune with the light outside, that, that helps me personally. I don't know if Chris, Adam, you have any thoughts there? I was just going to say I'm amazed with... with twins and uh and a toddler that you managed to get anywhere near midnight i'm uh, I'm, I'm clocking off i'm clocking oh. off way way before that um yeah look i i i am someone that that um places a, a high value on sleep and um i i try and notwithstanding having a eight month old try and get as much of it as i as i can um but i, I like like angela said i i certainly share her view that um i well, for me, I, I like getting up early, and and I get a lot more done that way. I'm a 
a morning person rather than than an evening person. Mm. Um, but again, it's it's every every um, every person's different, aren't they? And and actually, you know, it can be anxiety inducing by the same token if you're worrying about not getting enough sleep or when I need to go to sleep. It's mm. um, d- different different things will work for for different people. But th- for me, I would certainly endorse a, 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 a sort of early to bed early to early to rise but a but a certain consistency in my in my day because it um it allows me to hopefully fit in the things that i that i want to do which is okay it's not mental health related but it but it is because it's you know mental health is holistic isn't it and it's mm. about um it's about your your well-being and and for me if i can do the things that i want to do in the day and, and be the person that i want to be then then that, that goes a long way to to, to allow me to manage manage my my mood and how I'm feeling. Yeah, and and everyone is different. You know, there's a streamer, World of Warcraft streamer Asmund Gold, who quite likes. You know, he's very vocal with his community. Quite likes waking up at three four p.m. streaming, playing games till eight a.m. nine a.m. and then going to sleep. I mean, I, I personally wouldn't recommend that. But there are people out there that I guess. You know, or people that have night shifts and things like that. Everyone's different. Um, Adam, any points on that on sleep uh, before we move on to the next topic? And you don't need to. You know, you don't need to feel like you need to talk about sleep. I think with with regards to sleep, what tends to happen, you know, when we when we do experience whether that's negative emotions or again unhelpful thoughts, and there's, you know, we started to notice you know, our, our mental health potentially fluctuating, people tend to neglect those important physical health habits. Um, you know, the, as I said, there's such a strong connection between the mind and body, you know, you experience a lot of worry, a lot of anxiety, struggle to sleep, might experience a number of changes that go on in your body, you know, increased heart rate, you know, often lying in bed worrying. It's really important that people maintain those, those positive physical health habits as well in terms of know just trying to keep hydrated trying to eat well balanced meals throughout the day staying active not only just exercising but trying to think about how can i you know get up move around rather than sitting down for two three hours Mm -hmm. i'm very similar to that when i'm working you know it's not healthy to be sitting playing games for three four hours non-stop if you can stand up just walk around and you could try and incorporate then incorporate that stuff then that's fantastic again you know it's important that people focus on developing a really healthy sleep environment and think about certain habits that will contribute to them building um, some of those positive aspects. So for me, it's important. Everybody is different in terms of times they wake up, times they go to bed, but there are some you know, really effective strategies and, and tools that are usually recommended in terms of what people can be doing if they're struggling with their sleep. Mm. This wasn't on my list of discussion points. It's just popped into my head here. Um, you know, for me, I've sort of had anxiety in the past and y- y- with sleep, if I've been abroad on a, a work trip, which is rare, I-, I did that more in some of my previous jobs, I-, I really struggled to sleep. I don't know if it was my mind thinking about, you know, the next day, oh, I've got to stick to this regime, I've got to be there for this interview at 9am or whatever it is. I could just, I-, I couldn't sleep that well. But for me, that's been my main uh, thing that I've had personally has been anxiety and worry and stress and uh, at times I've managed to keep on top of it and at other times it sort of rears its head again um, there are obviously a lot of other you know that's more of a well-being thing but there's a lot of mental health illnesses and things like that out there um, I'm actually doing a course tomorrow it's weird timing it's this uh, mental health uh, first aid awareness half day course there are a lot of Ill- mental health you know illnesses and things out there that perhaps people aren't aware of you know do, do you think we need more education in this space i know people are talking a bit more about it and the campaigns from mind and others have have done well to sort of reduce the stigma about talking about mental health but do you still think we need more education because i feel like i, I don't have a great grasp of all the different mental health illnesses out there Uh, for me, I, I think, well, from research, we know that people who have better mental health knowledge and literacy and education are not only more confident looking after themselves, but they're also more confident looking after others. Um, so I, we know from research that it's important that people are better educated and, and 
it is definitely improving in terms of people learning about you know what does depression look like what does anxiety look like for my for me as a, as a therapist you now i can understand how would they be diagnosed and, and what are some of the signs and symptoms but the more where we are of these different uh, mental health um, conditions and illnesses and the better we can become at spotting the signs and symptoms among ourselves but also among our friends and then we can also be putting in some really effective actions and behaviors to support people whether that's us or whether that's pointing people in the direction of local mental health charities or supporting and encourage people to go to their their local gp um, it's important that we educate and we try ourselves to learn more about these areas so that we can help ourselves and also help others absolutely any other points there angela or chris we've got another question in the, the chat we can move on to no not really just to say i completely support what what uh, adam was saying you know it's um that there's a there's there's one thing talking about it there's an there's another thing about um you know understanding um mm. what what you know where you can go to find help if you need help um you know, you know what's out there and and how available is it um but also understanding and, and seeing the signs in both yourself and and you know in others about you know trying to spot um to spot and I, I don't like using the term you know mental health struggles necessarily but, but spotting things in people that allow them to seek help or or or, or, or get back on the right track at mm -hmm. an earlier point you know there's a there's a it takes a lot in there's a lot in current culture like in my, my background is predominantly in sport there's a you know it's a huge talking point um you know the, the heads up campaign mm -hmm. uh you know prominent current sportsmen and women and, and certainly ex-sportsmen and women talking about their experiences of of, of of the struggles that they've had but what i would hope is that in this conversation in five years time it doesn't need it doesn't need to it's almost a question like how bad does it have to be before things are actioned and, and steps are taken mm -hmm. and and actually the more we educate ourselves the more it doesn't have to be i got to you know to the point where I, I saw no other option than to, to you know i don't know turn to alcohol or i felt i had to go and, and see a therapist you know it's a, it, there are so many steps before that and i think the more that we can as a society and as individuals um, understand that i think it has to be for for, for the good yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. uh we've got a question in the chat from ryan 97 i believe that's Ilias our projects officer at British Esports. So hi, Elias, thanks for tuning in. He said, uh, any tips on avoiding dwelling on things in the past and enforcing a more forward-thinking, motivated mindset? I, I kind of, I historically have dwelled on things in the past. Is there any sort of experiences any of you panellists would like to share there? So this is like something I personally struggle with a lot, a lot, and even despite numerous coping techniques, I can't get rid of the worry of all the all the things I've done wrong in the past and where, where's I would have done things better. But um, I find that it's helpful to um, try and sort of make plans for things to do, make things to look forward to, and like also sort of teach yourself new things to improve yourself now so one thing i've been doing during this lockdown is learning a new language and learning how to draw i used to draw a lot when i was younger and i kind of stopped because my basically nothing i drew ended up looking like how i wanted it to look and that gave me a lot of anxiety so i just stopped doing it and I kind of kept looking back and I kept regretting that and I was like, okay, I'm, you know, I'm just going to try and learn to draw again. So I've been doing that recently. And um, in general, I find having things to look forward to is good. So I try and have like a day dedicated where I'll get, I'll hang out with my friends and get takeaway. So that helps me kind of, <laughs> that seems really strange, but it helps me sort of think forward and um, rather than think back. But that said i'm i'm still not very good at um not dwelling on the past i find just small things like that can um kind of you know 
help you feel better, make you feel like you are in the here and now and that you're preparing for the future and things. I completely agree with that. Finding little things to look forward to. You've said a takeaway there. I love looking forward to a takeaway, you know, and I haven't had been able to have many really during lockdown until recently. And I've, I've having those little things to look forward to, especially I find if you're doing a nine to five, a typical nine to five, doing something cool on the, the Friday or the Saturday, you know, arranging something different or special, whether it's whatever, chatting with friends or, you know, having a League of Legends session or whatever it is or takeaway. That helps me as well, Angela. Out of interest, what what have you? That's really great. You've been doing those things during lockdown. Can I ask what language you've been learning? I've been learning Japanese. Oh <laughs> wow! Well, that's certainly not easy. You know, I, I did the the classic, the usual German and French when I was at school. I think I'd be absolutely hopeless with uh, with Japanese. How's it? Is it going okay? Do you feel like you're you know you're confident with it? I'm definitely not confident yet. I've never, I've never been good at languages. Um, back at GCSE, I did French, and I did that for five years, and I was just mm. terrible at it. <laughs> um, but um, I've been, you know, it's, it's been interesting. I'm not like good at it, but whenever I um, see like a post online which um, has like Japanese written instead of English, and I'm able to um, like read a little bit of it, even if I don't understand what's being said if i can translate the individual um um hiragana characters then i'm like oh yes i've learned something this is great nice i just really want to say thank you to uh, the raiding party we've got here from T tamashi kanju's stream uh, that's layla our splatoon game advisor who's done a lot of great stuff with us at british esports so thank you layla and welcome to the people joining the stream we're talking all things mental health um, I guess nothing's really off the table. We're just having a sort of laid-back chat. Uh, if you have any comments, want to share any experiences in the chat, please feel free to. Uh, as I did say, thank you for dis discussing my point. Just to give you some background, I'm a trainee psychological well-being, and the chat has just gone down, and I've lost that. Hang on, well-being practitioner for the NHS who works with people with anxiety or depression. I have a passion for esports slash video games and wish there was better access for esports gamers to get mental health support this is something i've i agree with that you know i tend to see you know i follow a lot of players amateur players in league of legends uk league of legends and some that have you know uh, been vocal with their uh, mental health experiences on on twitter S don't always seem to have you know a place to go to they, they, they seem to sort of talk on twitter and hope that people respond to them and luckily, it is a largely good community in UK League of Legends and people are there to support one another. But I agree with Hazard. I wish there was better access for esports gamers in particular to get mental health support. I think there is a... Uh, I can't think of his name now. There's Dr. Uh, Doctor something. And um, he's, a, he's a mental health streamer. Um, and he, he, he gets big streamers on to talk with them about it. I feel really bad. I, I can't think of his name now. But what are your thoughts there, uh, everyone on the panel? Do you feel like there should be better support, specifically for this, you know, young esports players and people in esports? From, from what I see, you know, from, from the work that we do in sports, and, you know, we can, we can say that the games are, you know, they're, in some ways they are, performers and we know that when you're performing to a high level when there's a lot of pressure and stress on and you can be really difficult on your your well-being whether that's physical or mental so i i do think there should be better um provision in place and there might be um different initiatives or organizations as we've said who offer that support but i think if we can make sure that we are um encouraging young gamers to be really proactive with their mental health to be aware that you know maybe spending hours and hours playing a game can get to a point where it could actually be unhealthy where if you're actually avoiding doing things and it's impacting other areas of your life and you're neglecting your daily your, your everyday habits then I, I think we need to be not only educating but providing young gamers with the tools and coping skills to help them perform in those high pressured environments um, and in general just look after their, their overall well-being really 
Yeah, hundred percent. I think after I've done this course tomorrow, it'd be nice for British. I mean, at British Esports, we have signed the mental health charter at uh, the Sport and Recreation Alliance, which Adam, I met you through them, um, and they they are predominantly sports and physical sports focused. But I think, you know, if I'm being honest, probably British Esports could be doing more in this area, and I think this stream's probably a good good place to start, you know, and, and share around. Um, I've lost my train of thought because my toddler is raging outside, so bear with me. Uh, Layla said, yeah, glad to be here. It's a topic we all need to hear about. Yeah, Ilias has said it's Dr. K. That's who I was thinking of as a, as a chap called Dr. K. Um, if you haven't done, go and check out his streams because they have been, I know, very useful to some, uh, you know, big, big name streamers out there and, and to viewers as well. So, um, uh, yeah, he's good to check out his streams. Uh, moving on. Uh, social media is something I wanted to talk about because social media in the digital world we live in nowadays, I think it can be great, it can bring people together, but it can also have some negative aspects as well. I find myself scrolling through Twitter for too long sometimes. I'm thinking, what am I doing here? I don't know what I'm looking for. I'm going to go out, have a break, do something else, turn the phone off for a bit. What 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 are your views on social media and how it's impacting people's mental health? Or do you think this is something that maybe you know we can't blame social media over i'd be interested to hear your your thoughts i know sorry no 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 you go please um i know personally i struggle with turning off sometimes and just having time to myself and sometimes i get really annoyed that like um, social media means that people have to be so available all the time. Mm -hmm. There's times where my um, where my family will like try and get in contact with me, and I'm just I've got my phone away because I'm not wanting to look at it, and I don't reply to them within like an hour or two, and they're yelling mm -hmm. at me like, "Oh, why haven't you replied?" And I'm just like, I just I just need some time to myself, and um, I really get quite upset that social media and sort of the modern digital age has meant that people sort of expect responses immediately and expect you to always be available when you, I just can't find that I can or want to. Yeah. I, I, have, I have a lot of problems with scrolling through social media and just getting a whole lot of absolutely nothing done. I think YouTube is my biggest problem where I'll just sort of rewatch videos like a hundred times and I'm just like, like this is like entertaining me but it's not really like enriching me in any way and it's like better to do something active like pl like play a game that I've wanted to play for a long time and just haven't got around to mm. or drawing or anything like that and just instead of just mindlessly browsing through social media yeah I tend to agree with that Chris sorry you, you wanted to say something no no I, I was just going to say that that I think there's two there's two parts to it or as I see it there are two parts to it and, and the first is around is around boundary setting a little bit it's very easy I mean these these apps are are created to be addictive right I mean mm -hmm. and that's not necessarily a bad thing um, but it's you know it has become and I do believe that um, society does have a problem with their mobile phones I think it is increasingly difficult to to, to switch off I think you know you can you can do everything on your phone it's never not by your side and, and it's become very much a habit of, of almost not being um, in a moment of boredom or not even boredom in a moment of being on our own we turn we tend to turn to our phones and I think that has some, some negative connotations associated with it so um, for me it's around boundary setting as well like if, if I want I try and set time to if I'm going to look at social media to go and look at social media and that's what I'm going to do in that that moment I, I like everybody else I am I, often find myself um, scrolling through a news feed or or scrolling through my, my Instagram and, and not engaging with it but, but kind of numbing out so that's I think that's one part is, is the boundary setting and the second part I think is is, is understanding that the, 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 the life that people show you on social media it's not reality that there's mm. you know it's very easy to window shop your life or, or, or your experience and you know that that is that to and I'm not educated in this it's simply my own perception of it but it, it's it, it's increasingly difficult I think for 
for the, especially the younger generation to to see that you know that what is that the rose tinted view of uh, of life on Instagram is is not reality and the standards that celebrities um, you know set for want of a better word or or the, the the lifestyle that they show and it doesn't have to be at that level it can be you know um, a health and fitness influencer for example it, that's only a part of their lives they still have the same struggles and the same thoughts and same anxieties that we do mm. just some choose not to to, to to publicize that and i think it's important that as part of the kind of education around using social media that that people are aware um that you know aware of of both its incredible positive aspects but also some of the negative bits that are associated with it and um you know uh, you know and i fall into that trap as well you know i i can look on my instagram feed and 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 you know at one moment it can be inspiring to see somebody doing something but then suddenly i i might knock myself or doubt myself for not Mm. being you know not doing what they are doing or or not living the life that they are or i start questioning myself and so we all have the propensity to do it i think it's just an awareness of that and, and trying to put those boundaries in place to make sure that we keep checking in with ourselves um and and checking yeah checking the, the impact that, that the, the online world is having in our day-to-day lives yeah some really really great answers there and I, I agree with a lot of that you'd almost think you know social media is still relatively new on the grand scheme of things there should be disclaimers or something because you know listening to what you guys have said and also tallying up with my experiences i mean i have people close to me uh, i won't say who but you know some of them will get upset after being on Facebook too long and thinking, oh, these people have put that post up, like, or, or didn't mention me, or these people are doing these things, I'm not doing anything, I'm useless. I've, I've got other friends who've said that they just had to leave social media completely because for them it wasn't good. They found that they'd bump into someone in the street, like a friend or something, and they'd say, oh, how, how have you been? Yeah, oh, I've... I've I've done this, or I've been on holiday, and they've gone, oh, yeah, I saw it on Facebook. Oh, right, yeah. Now the conversation's <laughs> no longer, you know, and it, it does affect people in different ways, and I completely agree with what you're saying, Chris. It's not, it doesn't reflect reality. This is what I, I try and say to one of those people that's close to me, is that they might get a bit anxious about what other people are doing, because on social media well especially on platforms like Facebook and Instagram you generally tend to get just positive posts you know I've passed my driving test I've gone on holiday I've done this I've done that Um, and it does create that sort of distorted sense of reality you know that's that's what I found personally anyway Um, Adam did you want to touch on anything on social media um, before we move on no, I you know, I agree with everyone's comments. I think it can it can have its positive sides, as, as Chris said. We can't neglect that. I think there's some people who are you know saying social media is really bad and we can't use it. There's some mm. fantastic educational tools and, and and great accounts who are teaching so many people, whether that's your young people or adults, about so many different areas of, of, of life. So I, I think we can't um, neglect the, the positive side of it, but at the same time there are a lot of people who who use it as a tool to compare themselves to others in which case you know we're starting to develop an unhealthy relationship and again you know some people will spend hours on on social media and again neglect other areas of their their life so it's really important to understand our own relationship that we have with social media and and, and our phones i mean the iPhones are great for being able to monitor screen time um and i think as as chris said i usually recommend the the same thing in relationship to boundaries you know can you set a certain time period every day where you're going to say well i'm going to watch youtube or i'm going to go on twitter or i'm going to go on facebook mm. and it's interesting when you give people that mission or that task to do some people find it really difficult but sometimes as people start to slowly sort of come off of social media and not necessarily be on it as much as they start to realize well there were other things they might start to engage in with, whether that's going out with friends, seeing people, whether that's doing something that they, they love or, or taking up a new activity or challenge. So mm. it's really about understanding the relationship that we have with the apps and, and our phone and social media. 
Yeah, 100%. Right, I'm conscious we've got about seven minutes left until we're five o'clock. So anyone in the chat, you want to ask any questions or have any experiences, please do type away. Um, just but coming towards the end then, are, are there any particular stories any of you on the panel would like to share, or perhaps of your own mental health experiences or challenges or other stories? You might, you might have worked with people at Milestone or Believe Perform or whatever else where you've you've learnt something that you think that would be interesting for other people to be aware of that you know might have a similar experience. I know Angela, you're going to say something, weren't you? Before anything, so I'm going to let Angela go because I know you're going to say something. Sorry, I just like um, thought of something regarding the previous point that I hadn't like discussed because um, I think we were talking about how social media often sort of shows like the best of people's lives, which mm. also, which can make you feel like you aren't really doing much of your own. But I think like social media can also show you like the absolute worst of like the world as well. I think mm. I've got absolutely fed up of using Twitter because of the little um, what's happening right now thing on the side just oh, yeah. always shows just the absolute d terrible and disgusting things that are happening in the world and I mm -hmm. think it's important to stay in like on top of these things and to keep, keep like to educate yourself on what's happening in the world but if it's all the time I just I just can't deal with it like I don't want to like constantly feel like the world is a terrible pl irredeemable place mm -hmm. and things like that so I, I constantly struggle with um, seeing both the best of people and feeling feelings of jealousy and also seeing the worst of people just be thinking everything's terrible. So <laughs> I had to switch off, you know, around the lockdown when it when it in that period of uncertainty before lockdown was before we went into lockdown and I went to the shops to get some items and there was nothing there. <laughs> And I was getting a bit frustrated. In the weeks after that, I had to sort of turn the news off and turn the radio off for a bit because it got a bit too much for me. It was COVID-19 was everywhere. And I think if I'd left the radio on and I check, you know, news websites like I usually do throughout the day, it, it wouldn't have been good for me. I, ha I had to turn it off for a bit. Yes, I, I missed out on some of the news that was happening for about, I don't know, a month or so, but... I knew if there was really big things, then I would have he heard it through my parents or my wife. My wife tends to listen to the radio a lot more than I do, but I had to. I completely agree with you, Angela. I had to turn off the news because you're right. Those those latest bits that come up, a lot of them are negative. You know, and I I found that a challenge. Absolutely. Um. um Cool. Okay. Uh, anything else? Uh, any? Uh, did, did, would Would you like to add anything else? Uh, any of the panelists? Because I know we've only got a couple of minutes left here. Um, um, I've, there's a few discussion points I've had to skip because we ha we've run out of time. But it's been a really good chat. Is there anything else you'd like to add, or any shout outs you'd like to make? No. Okay. Well, I think we've really covered this off really well. Um, it's been a it's been a great chat. I, I've learnt from you all. Um, I hope that I'll learn even more from this um, mental health first aid course I'm doing tomorrow. And hopefully, British Esports can do more in this space to keep the dialogue going around mental health because it is important. And if you have anything, you know, from Milestone, Believe Perform, please keep us posted. You know, you've got my email address. Uh, please bug me and, and send any developments and things my way. But I think we'll. Uh, We'll end the stream there then, everyone. It's a few minutes before five. So um, thanks, everyone, to who, who tuned in and watched. Uh, we had some good numbers today, and we will share this stream VOD on our YouTube channel and across our different uh, social media. I know the irony of that, right? We've just been talking about the negatives of social media. And we, you know, but it is, it is a good way for to update people who, who follow you and everything. Like Adam, you were saying, there are good aspects of social media and it's it's picking those out, isn't it? And making sure we're, uh, we've are we got the balance right and everything. So thanks again uh, to everyone. Thanks for the people that are following the stream now and we'll be back with some more streams. I think our next stream is 4 p.m. this Friday with Elliot. It's a fun Friday stream. It's very laid back, casual uh, games and Elliot does a quiz as well. Oh, and I, I will say before we end the stream as well, I think we had we have a new competition we're running where you can uh, 
click to claim a bonus where you put the little channel points in and when we hit 50,000 um, we'll do a big giveaway so that was Elliot's grand idea so thanks Elliot for that um, thanks again to the panel I really appreciate it and uh, without further ado Sacco signing out for now and I'll see you next time bye bye